less stress, more time, more money. Welcome to the Cash Flow Contractor interview. Welcome back to the Cash Flow Contractor, all about uh, less stress, more time, more money. And, and stories. And yeah, so. and stories. This is the, uh, the much awaited sequel. It's, it's almost like, uh, what is it, episode five? <laughs> of Star Wars? Yeah. Yeah. Never saw it. You never saw it? Saw episode one about 1974 or something, right? Oh, well, that wow. was episode four. In 1974 was already episode <laughs> They started four? on four. Oh. And then they went to five. Well, I That's why I said it was like episode with five. Chewbacca. Okay. Yeah, I've only, I saw one of the Star yeah. Wars. It was the first one when they re-released it like in the 90s or something. You know, because I, I don't get that something much. occurs to me that we all vowed before we went live that we were going to actually talk about sales. Today. I know. Exactly. And, and here we are selling movies. Yeah, I know. There right? we go. Hey, okay. anything to make a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, welcome back. Good to be here. Yeah. We don't have brisket today. No. no. Um, nothing to distract us. I skipped breakfast. We're talking I about we sales. Get something, but. I, I'm I'm gonna dive us in. I don't want to. Um, okay, you're go off the rails too fast. So I'm responsible. If we wander off course, it's your fault. Exactly. Okay, John. Yes. Remind us how you got into sales at Green Oak. At Green Oak. Okay, I was a customer back in 2015. Okay. Um, my wife and I, when we bought that house, we knew we wanted to do something in the backyard because it, there there was not a space. Right. So that was always in our plan. So. We moved here in 13, then around 15, we decided to make that decision on doing something. Yeah. Uh, and a friend of ours down the street um, had gotten a pergola. So my wife said, we need a pergola. I said, what's a pergola? She said, you know, it's a wooden, she kind of described Same. it, and I said, a gazebo. She said, no, it's a pergola. So we went <laughs> back and forth, what's a gazebo, what's a pergola? She said, well, you just need to go look at it. So we walked down to their house and walk in the backyard, and she points and she said, "That's a pergola." I said, "A flat gazebo." <laughs> so I asked my friend. I said, "Who built it? And did you like them? Would you use them again?" Yeah. And they said, "Green Oakie," and yes. Well, that's all I needed to know, you know, because we rely on recommendations from our friends. Right. You know, you see it on these neighborhood apps all the time. Hey, right. does anybody know a plumber? Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. Who would you recommend? Uh, so that was good enough for me. Uh, so I called Green Oakey and we started the process and um, got new concrete poured. They laid out a design. Um, and, you know, since I was, you know, doing consulting stuff at home when it came time to build the pergola, I was there. Um, mm. So I was sitting in my little breakfast nook slash office, and um, I was watching the guys put up this pergola. And about two hours into it, I go put my boots on, and you know I'm out there. And slowed the whole project and, down. Yep, I was yeah. that guy. <laughs> oh no, Mr. Homeowner came out. So I'm just watching, and and it looked like six or seven guys, buddies, went over to their friend's house. You know, because it was, I mean, it was hot. It was in, you know, it was late June, early July. And, uh, you know, but they were laughing, talking. You know, nobody's throwing tools and stuff. Um, and uh, so they enjoyed what they did. So it was a pretty large project. So I was around the guys quite a bit for, you know, a week or 10 days. Yeah. And then I struck up a friendship with Kevin, the owner. And, you know, I've had businesses back in my younger days, and I knew what quality looked like to me. I knew what service looked like to me. I knew what taking care of customers looked like to me. Yeah. And we just, and talking with Kevin, you know, we just, everything just lined up. Yeah. I mean, and I thought, man, this is odd. You know, not that I'm all that, but I, you just know what you like. Right, right. And I knew that I liked what he did. And um, so, you know, shortly thereafter, he, he called up and wanted to go to lunch. Uh, mm -hmm. He said, hey, you know, can I take you to lunch? I'm like, yeah. I mean, anytime anybody ever offers to take you to lunch, you go. Did he pay? Oh, yeah. Well, I made sure of that before. I'm like, Who's are you paying? Buy are you buying? Who's buying? 
you know, can I get a soda? <laughs> uh, so we sit there and, and so we're, we're talking and he said, what do you think about my company? And I said, can I be brutally honest? You know, and he said, yeah, because he wanted feedback, which, you know, if you're in business, you always, you always want feedback. Right. Because you're always learning. Yeah. You oh, never you, know everything. Yeah, you got to constantly improve too. So I told him, I said, to me, I said, the guys did incredible work. Um, the quality's impeccable. I said, I loved everything about it. I said, the weakest part of this whole process to me was your salesperson. I said, I used you because you were highly recommended. But if my only experience would have been the salesperson, I said, I probably wouldn't have used you. You know, because, you know, they didn't listen. Wow. You know, when I would ask a question, I wouldn't mm. get a response back. Is this salesperson still with them? Mm-mm. Well, so... Uh, maybe you trained them up. Well, and here, here's... Because it took, it took about three weeks before I even had a number. You know, and I would call this person up and say, hey, any idea? Because I don't want to waste your time. Yeah. Is this 2000 20 30000 1500 I mean, how much is it? Because I don't want to... Well, we got to, it depends on this and that. You know, she didn't even give me any of the variables. And I said, give me two of the three, you know, because I walked past algebra in high school. You know, I can get just, is it square footage? Is it, you know, based on the length? Is it based on how much money you think I have? Tell, you know. So I told, I shared that with him. And then he said, so you have some free time, right? I said, I'm not taking anybody's job. I said, I'm not here to do that. And he said, well, I've got to make a change anyway. I said, well, I'll help you out a little. I said, I'm not a salesman. I said, I can go talk to people and tell them my story, you know. Uh, so one thing led to another, started out kind of part-time, you know, because I was still doing safety and sure. oil and gas stuff. So, uh, so started out that way, and quickly it just, Took you over. Know, turned into, you know, full time. So, <clears throat> what you're saying is Kevin sold you. What Absolutely. He, yeah. He sold you on the job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he did. He did. And he's um, pretty subtle. Yeah. So, yeah, we just fit. Everything fit. And he backs me up 100% if I make a mistake, which I do. Everybody does if I, you know, I mean, I try to. You know, being an accountant, you know, I'm going to multiply everything out 15 times. But, or, you know, if I make a mistake, we live by it. If yeah. I cut somebody a deal, you know, or mm-hmm. make a special pricing for whatever reason, um, he backs it up. That's good. Uh, yeah. So you uh, you didn't have any sales experience formally, I guess you could say. You weren't a full-time salesperson. You no. sold things in the past as a business owner. Yeah, as a business right. owner. But now that you've been in this, what, five years yeah, a little over five. A little over five. So do you like sales? No. <laughs> why or why not? <laughs> no. I like talking to people. <laughs> okay. Um, but, and I know, you know this is a sales topic. Do you like sales? No. Not from that standpoint. Yeah, you know, I like talking to people. Yeah. Um, for instance, we do a lot of trade shows. And so my first trade show was the state fair, which is 11 days. feels like 30, but it's 11 days. (laughs) So you have all these other vendors out there. And by the end of the first day, I have everybody's spiel memorized. You know, that home improvement person right there, I know exactly what they're going to say. The water purifier guy right there, I know what they're going to say. You know, the, the guy that does the siding, I know his spiel. It's all the same. And it just, that's what turns me off. Right, yeah. So when people walk by, I don't know what I'm going to say to them because it's person specific. Mm. You know, they don't want that. To me, you know, one of the biggest phrases that, that I would hear is, hey, are you thinking about starting a home improvement project? Oh, gosh, I, I got so tired of hearing that all the time. <laughs> it's like, you know, robotic. And, and sterile and cold and yeah um, <laughs> you know so I, I decided real quick that's not me yeah 
I'm just going to talk to people. It may be, you know, sometimes I, at the fair, you know, one day I had on my NN for Norman North, my little soccer pullover, and someone up, Edmund pulls up, oh, you're Norman North, we're Edmund Santa Fe, you know, so we start talking soccer. Then it turns out we may have soccer coaches in common. Right. So then I've already struck that rapport with them. Uh, you know, so, and it, it's not, I'm not trying to go the back door way into doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's not it. And, and kind of just that, that approach, which is just me, because if I'm going to give you that, if I'm going to put on my salesman hat, yeah, I'm not good, mm-hmm. because then I've got to try to be something I'm not. Uh, we just finished up a job uh, last week, a pretty big project. And I didn't find this out till after the fact, because uh, Kevin was talking yeah. um, with the homeowner, and she said, um, she said I met John at one of the trade shows, and talked to him, and turned around and looked at my husband and said, "That's who we're using." And he said, "There's other people that do out here that do this same stuff." She said, it "Doesn't matter." And and that's not anything about oh well, look what I did. It, it's just that that connection. Right. Rapport, building that rapport. rapport, and I yeah. wasn't trying to sell her anything. Right. I was just talking to her. Well, nobody wants to be sold to. They don't. Like and that. they can, they can absolutely tell when they're being sold to. Right. Everybody that's listening right now knows exactly when someone's selling to them, and right. they don't like it. No. But they want to be treated as a person. They want to have a genuine connection with somebody, and they want to be heard. No, that's right. You know, and I hear this frequently. I'll meet with someone. You know, this week I met with someone and at their house, uh, which is very common, um, especially in non-corona times. Um, and she said, we've had two other people out here and they didn't listen. She said, you listened mm. and you, you understood what we wanted. So what, let's break that down. What does it mean to listen? Like how do, I, I understand, but... Like, give us some really clear things. Like, when you go in, what are you trying to listen for? What questions are you asking? I know it's person-specific, yeah. but some examples. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, one big thing is is your family size. Mm-hmm. How do you entertain? If you entertain, how do you use your back space? How are you going to use... What kind of furniture are you going to have? Yeah. Do, are you going to put speakers up here? Do you like lights? Because that kind of tells me how they're going to use that space. Mm -hmm. I had a guy out in, um, it was towards Hinton, which for those of you not listening, that's an hour and a half. West of here. Yeah, it's that way. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So he calls me up and says, hey, I don't want you to drive all the way out here for this. He said, just give me a ballpark. And I said, well, just give me the, you know, the depth. Something to go with. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, based on that um, size, you're looking, that's a $16,500 pergola. So I said, okay. He said, that lets me know what I need to know. So then he calls him back a day or two later. He said, hey, that's in my budget. He said, can I get you to come out? I said, absolutely, I'll come out and we'll lay it out. So I go out there and I just didn't walk up saying, okay, here's your, here's your, let's sign the contract, 16.5. Right. We walk around back and I'm looking at his house and he had a pool and I'm like, let's talk about this space. Let's talk about how you're going to use it. So we talk and and just one question leads to the other. And then about 40 minutes later, I'm just standing there. I can't do that for $16,000. Are you crazy? (laughs) No. Well, what I did is I said, we don't need a $16,500 pergola. I said, we need a $6,000 pergola. Oh, I thought you were going to go the other way. Mm-hmm. And, why said, is, and why is that? Because based on his existing space. Yeah. And based on his, because he had a long porch. Okay. That was already porch, covered. That okay. was already covered. Mm. Then he said, I want to go this. And he had columns, you know, so. I'm, Easy to attach I'm, to and things right, like that. Right. And yeah. just for symmetry. A lot of right. people are symmetrical. Right. So, and then in that whole discussion of how many family members and do people lay out by the pool, do they sit? Basically, I told him, I said, based on what you've told me, 
right. in this conversation. You don't want a $16,500 pergola. Yeah. If you trust me to build what fits your family, that's yeah. a, and I showed him where it would go, that's a $6,000 pergola. So he said, so let me, let me get this straight. He said, if I walk in there and bring you out a check, I've already told you I'm planning on spending sixteen five. If I bring you out a blank check, what are you going to make it out for? I said $6,000 because anything more than that, I'm not serving you properly. And I, I said, I, and he said, he said, you're the worst salesman in the world. <laughs> I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, it doesn't even refer you to 20 I'm not people. I'm here to sell you something. I'm here to meet your needs. To serve you. To serve you and to solve a problem. Right. I had one lady last week, an older lady, not that it matters, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometime in today's society, and this was a nice neighborhood, you could tell. Yeah. You know, uh, and she had just bought this house, and she called me up, and she had an existing pergola there. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't stained, wasn't, anyway, it was gray, okay, you know, that fatina. And she said, I'm worried about this. I don't want it to fall down. I said, well, let me come look at it. So I went out there, small pergola, it was like 10 by 12. Right. She said, I don't know if I need to replace it or what. So I'm kicking around on it, pushing, prodding it and you know looking at it i told her this thing's not going anywhere yeah i said if you call me up five years from now and say it's still standing I, i'll believe it i said there's nothing wrong with this she said I, I had three other people come out here you're the only one that was honest with me and told me that it's fine the other three told me it needed to be replaced i wow. said no ma'am you doesn't. know in uh observations of what you've said already is <clears throat> one thing is salesman's a dirty word to you it yeah it's it's just slimy I, I love that so much because i ask groups of people to describe a salesman i always hear it's a slimy sleazy car salesman liar pushy right. obnoxious yeah. but you obviously are a salesman and you're a damn good one and, and he, you winced when i said that but i mean a salesman someone who accomplishes sales so I, I've had people tell me, well, I wouldn't mind selling something I believed in. <laughs> so, no, no, you're, why you're, would you're you right. try to sell anything else? You're right. And anyway, it's just interesting to me that people have a bad taste in their mouths about salesmen. Yet, to your point earlier, uh, Khalil, people don't want to be sold, but they love to buy. But a salesman comes out as a teacher, is honest, trustworthy, educates them. Uh, they love it. Yeah. And that... So we won't call you a salesman because I don't want to hurt your feelings and you're our guest. But you're obviously a very good salesman. Yeah, you're a great problem solver. Pro you're, yeah. a, you're a educator. great listener. You're a great yeah. educator. Yeah. Well, I, I think if we're all salesmen. Oh, yeah. Right. We have to you sell know, ourselves every day. You know, soccer coach, right. marketing, yep. you know, whatever it is you do, you're selling yourself. Absolutely. Right. Uh, and everybody. But how do you do it without feeling sleazy? And I think that's what we're hearing no, from you today. Honesty. You know, yeah. just transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kevin, our owner, he, we were talking the other day, and he said, man, he said, I almost bought this book the other day. I don't know if this was the name of the book or uh, just a chapter, whatever. Um, but it was, integrity is not a question mark. Hmm. I mean, we've all heard, you know, doing the right thing at the right time, blah, blah. Right. No matter. You know, and that's something that, that I grew up. You know, you always do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're going to come out on the short end mm -hmm. a lot, uh, but you still won because you can. And th this is what you know. I tell my boys, um, I can walk in any room, any restaurant, and if we're sitting down, if I see a customer over there, I don't have to say, "Hey, boys, when we leave, let's go out the back." door because <laughs> i wrong because right. i wrong to that person yeah you know uh now you may not like me and but i i haven't done anything consciously to hurt you if i did i try to make it right, right. so when i see you wherever i see you we're good now if you harbor ill will that that's you that's not right. me but i think if you do the right thing, yeah. the right time, and you know you work hard, it's funny. You know all these. You learn all these lessons in life growing up. And I remember when I was um, 
12, um, just like the parks and recreation that they have in every city. So right. I work for the parks and recreation uh, back home. And, you know, we lined off ball fields, we cut grass, we cleaned up during softball tournaments, all that stuff. And the head of the parks and recreation is a gentleman named Jerry Belk, Coach Belk. Coach Belk's about six foot seven. Um, and he played uh, professional baseball a little bit. He's a great athlete, big man in town. So back there, back home in Tuscaloosa, you had God, Bear Bryant, and Jerry Belk. <laughs> you don't know which order. I mean, that, it could just Depends be on the all, week. Yeah, all on the same plane. Well, anyway, so Jerry Belk was very influential to my family because my dad came from a broken home. Mm. Well, Coach Belk was his coach at his high school. So from the time my dad was in seventh grade, Coach Belk was his coach. And he kind of steered my dad down a good path. He was a role model. Mm. And uh, so I always held Coach Belk to, like, that's God, Bear Bryant, Coach Belk, right? So I was out there one day. It's middle of the summer, and I'm cutting – the softball field with the push lawnmower, which I don't, you know, I think it's be, it's illegal now to make a twelve year old do that. <laughs> hey, they're not bad if the blades are sharp. Yeah. If they're dull, so it's there's working. nobody out there. It's just me, the sun, and nobody's just hot. And I'm just going, going. So I get to the end of that, you know, I get to to left field, and then you know, I turn around, and Coach Belk is standing right there. You know, yeah. And I mean, you know, God bear Brian. Right. Belt. And uh, he uh, he said, Hill, Little Hill, he said, I've been sitting up on that hill watching you cut grass for the past hour. He said, you're, you're a good worker. Okay. That right there, that lesson. Yeah, you're talking about it 25 years later, 35 yeah, years. Somebody's later. always watching. Right. Or even if they're not watching, what are you Excellent. doing? Yeah. And I know that's that's a little tangent, but kind of that. That's a great point. That goes. Somebody's always watching. Somebody's always watching. Yeah. And, and they're taking notes, you know, so and they're listening to you when, when I'm out there talking to people. Mm. Um, nobody invites me into their home to buy a pergola. Right. They, and, and I tell people, all we're going to do today is we're going to get ideas. We're just, you know, brainstorming. we're going to look brainstorming. We're getting ideas. I'll, and I'll give you pricing. So one thing that, that I learned or that I've learned over the past five years um, is the more options you give someone yeah the better because at some point you're gonna you're gonna hit their price point you're gonna hit their budget okay right and I never ask I had one lady one time she said hey um, I knocked on the door and she said my budget my budget is $25,000 I said don't ever she's a good negotiator don't, don't ever throw your I, budget out there <laughs> I said because now what if everything you want comes up to that now look like I work to your budget. I said, so just in the future, don't ever tell anybody that. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, just solving, solving the problems. Um, and you know, being honest and you know, it's right. like the lady that, you know, she would have bought a pergola if I would have told her to buy a pergola. Right. But you know, it's funny when we finished that, the lady that. Yeah. With the didn't discolored was, one. Yeah. yeah. And so I said, I'm not, and I told her, I said, I'm not selling you a pergola. Right. I said, that was fine. And she said, you met with my son-in-law three years ago. And she said, he never bought a pergola because their pool project ran overboard. She said, but when he heard that I was, had this issue, he said, you need to call John Hill at Green Oakey. Somebody, you know. somebody was watching. Okay. Yep. Did, right. Right. So yeah. her son may not ever buy any. Right. But if I see him in the restaurant, he's probably going to say, hey, thanks. You know, you met with my mother-in-law. Right. You know, you, so I mean. Well, I think it goes back to people don't buy a lot of things based on logic. Sure, there are things like you absolutely need to get deodorant, so you're going to buy the deodorant and with logic maybe. But especially with these high purchase prices, it's more sure. of an emotional purchase. And you are, and that's what you do really well is when you're getting ideas, you're not making it always super logical, but you're making it emotional as far as what do you envision this space being like? What are some of the things that you want to do with your family? That's a, a very emotional process for people and people are buying from you 
because you are listening to their emotions and you are helping them re achieve that vision, that emotional vision they have for their, their backyard. Yeah, and I, you know, it, it's funny. Um, when I get in somebody's backyard, then it's, I try to put myself in their spot. Yeah. I live in that backyard. This is my backyard now. So I get excited. Right. It's like, man, we can, and it's like, you know, it's almost like, you know, hey, we can do this or we can do that. And then right. later we can do this. And, you know, just kind of, I try to, and, and I tell everybody, you know, because we have different size of posts, different size beams, different size joists. So a lot of times people get hung up on all the big, the bigger cedar, bigger wood. Yeah. And a lot of times I tell them, if you trust me, let me build this how I would build it for my house. Yeah. And I can probably save money. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's kind of... That's good. So how do you, how do you find, like, who is the ideal customer for you? Um, and just specific to Green Oaky. Yeah, my, someone that's, um, uh, regardless of age, you know, that they could have lived in the house 15 years, they could have moved in a year ago or two months ago. Right. Someone that's wanting to change up their backyard, okay. increase their space, Okay. Uh, add to what they have. I met with a, a lady yesterday right up the, the road there in Carrington. We built her pergola, you know, back in the summer. And now she wants some screen shades on there. So I stopped by our house yesterday. Yeah. It's a, a 10 by 16 small pergola. Yeah. And she said, this changed my backyard. Yeah. So that's the ideal customer. Somebody, Double the size of your house, basically, because right. you've got all that space. Right. And she said, I, she said I, I, I think she's lived there two years. She said, mm -hmm. I never came outside because I couldn't because of the sun or because the, mm -hmm. she said, I come out here all the time. So my ideal customer is somebody, regardless of the size, you just want to increase the value yeah. and you want to enhance and change your backyard up a little bit. That's my ideal customer. Gotcha. Is somebody that's looking to invest in their house, mm -hmm. change their space and enjoy something out there. Yeah. So in the average week for you, you know, you're, it sounds like these conversations are going in depth a lot of the time. If you right. do go and meet with them, how many hours a week are you working? I mean, I know it changes seasonally sometimes, but on average. Yeah, it changes. Uh, slow week, you know, in the winter, November, December, 35 hours mm -hmm. a week. In the busy time, 80. <laughs> I mean, that's what I figured. You, yeah, it's, and you know, and this year with Corona, um, you know, I, I remember the day that, you know, the NBA, remember they, they shut right. down the NBA. In Oklahoma was, City. Yeah. yeah, in Oklahoma City. Then everything just, for about a week, it was like, okay, wh what's America going to do? Right. And then, you know, shortly after that week, then it just went bam, bam, bam. Crazy. Just crazy. And but, you, usually this time of year, it, it starts to slow down a little bit, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe in a yeah. month. This is mid-October. Yeah, mid -October. starts slowing down a little. You know, just, and, and the big thing was uh, ski trips got canceled. Yeah. Summer vacation got canceled. All of this people's disposable income, what they had already budgeted yeah. for, got canceled. Mm -hmm. Plus, they were stuck at home. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny because, you know, everybody, about February, March, late March, early April, that's when you need to get your backyard, you know, get the leaves up, get the... Right dog piles up, you know, kind of shoot. This time, once Corona hit and everybody's at home, people were cleaning up their backyards yeah. like crazy because they didn't have anything to do. Yep. So home improvement's been crazy this yeah, year. Yeah. Home, yeah. Home improvement. It's funny. My, my wife, she heads up a round table uh, yeah. in Atlanta at Kennesaw uh -huh. and they've got the top executives from all the major companies there and they meet once a month and so you got like the head guy delta wow. uh, voya financial mm -hmm. home depot home depot as i was about to say yeah and so when home depot was uh discussing um they said that that the um, home improvement industry probably still to right now is the number one business in america yep 
you know, because when well, you go to Lowe's, you go to Home Depot, look at the parking lot. Right. That's crazy. You know, so um, I forget. What, how did I get to right there? No, we're talking <laughs> about how it's been so crazy during coronavirus. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we've got a methodical system, you know, th- and that was one of the things that, that I was intrigued with helping Kevin out and because and, I'm a I'm a process guy. Mm-hmm. I like processes. You know? So with your process, you're working all these times. What is the like? What are the things you're spending time on? Like, I don't know that how much prospecting you're doing, phone calls, you know, yeah. follow ups, quotes, proposals, you know, admin stuff, company meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can go through that, but really that back to that process. Okay. I like a well like I can go sit at Waffle House and just watch the cook. Like one day that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work at Waffle House. Be the cook at Waffle House. Yeah. They don't have to pay me anything. I just need a hat and a spatula. You know, <laughs> and just call them out, baby. You know, I, I, don't want I a think slow you night. mentioned that last yeah, time. This is did. a genuine it, uh, I, aspiration. I, I, I was not kidding. Okay. Um but anyway, so we're always can um looking to refine our process yeah because if you want the only way you can build as many projects as we do is if you follow a system you know same reason you go to mcdonald's all the french fries taste the same from here to right you know new york well to saudi arabia to yeah russia exactly (laughs) exactly because they do it the same way that's the only way so you need to be efficient you know we here's the steps we take for every project no Mm -hmm. matter how big no matter how small um so um from the sales side as far as prospecting you know we've got a great marketing company that's <laughs> really helped us out tremendously uh social media um is way above my pay grade you know well but, and, but, and but let's, I, I let's think not even make it trivial like it's not i mean really you're not doing much prospecting no, you that's are just right. vetting leads that come in that's right i'm vetting leads right. so so the vet okay y- you know we may have alluded to this last time um or i know we talked about it off air um corona made everybody reevaluate how they're doing business yeah and if your business did not change for the better then you're the big loser in corona absolutely okay you just look at how many people used to fly to a meeting hey i'm gonna i'm gonna fly to okc i'm gonna fly to charlotte and meet you we'll have lunch and we'll talk <laughs> really we're gonna do that <laughs> you know that, which is why well, i don't want to spend the 50 bucks to subscribe to zoom well that's true <laughs> yeah but if, like your neighbor if he has zoom like, i got a guy that can patch you into his <laughs> <laughs> off the record Okay, off the, off the record. record. Uh, Cut that out. No, so now I hope all that returns because it's good for our economy for Delta to be booked up for the airlines and the economy and the restaurants. Well, appropriate and the use. And it, it's good for people to be face to face, too. We need No, that. It, it is. But there's oh, a lot gosh. of waste involved. In yeah. It. But anyway, so when, so we had a couple of things working. I had all these leads because right. it's getting busy. I can't go to everybody's house. Right. You know, the average, you know, try to be methodical once I set my scheduling appointments. Like once we've determined I'm coming out to your house, I have everything in zones. So that way, um, once I get up to Edmond, I'm, you know, that Northeast, I'm going to be there. That's where I am mm-hmm. for that big block of time. Yeah. I'm not going to go to an appointment in Edmond, then go to Noble, then go to Yukon. You know, go all, then I've wasted my time. So if you're not from Oklahoma, these all these places are like 20, 30 miles apart from each other. Yeah, or yeah. More. So really, so and and basically, once I have everything mapped out, I can leave one appointment. And to me, if my next appointment is more than twelve minutes away, then I I wasn't efficient. Right. Okay. So, uh, so I get a lead. I'm I'm going. To, here's another little thing that I learned like you know the customer has reached out to us via social media referral called us something so I have their name address phone number yeah used to what I would do is when I get that lead I'm calling you yeah you know so I call you goes automatically to voicemail why 
Well, they don't recognize the number. They don't recognize the number. Right. So what I do now on all my leads, when I get the lead, I'll text you. Good morning. This is John. My name is John Hill with Green Oakey. I will be calling you later today to discuss your project. Oh, that's great. John yeah. Hill, Green Oakey. Yeah. So then they know that well, number. who the number is. Yeah. And so I, I leave myself not. I'm calling you in five minutes because right. what if something yeah. else happens? But I let them know that day that I want to be calling them that day. Right. Now, if it's later in the afternoon, if I don't get the lead till four thirty, I may say I'm gonna call you tomorrow because I've got. I may still have five other appointments. Okay, yeah. so I've already established who I am, and I will be calling you. Um, so then I call them up. Yeah. On the phone, um, and we start talking now. Pre-corona, I may say, "Hey, when would you like to meet?" Right. I'll come out to your house. Well, then I may get out to their house and. You know, it's not even a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Or really what they wanted doesn't involve me. Yeah. Well, then that's about three hours of my time from either when I left the office to go to their house mm -hmm. to meet with them, then the dis the time between that I had to allow for between their them and the next appointment. Right. So that could have been four hours that I wasted mm -hmm. and, and wasted 30 minutes of their time at their house. Right. Uh, so, Corona, this Corona kind of gave me the benefit of now you have to talk to me on the phone because, <laughs> you know, I'll get arrested if I leave the house. <laughs> you know, when everybody's right. like, stay at home unless, right. Right. you know, you have to. Here's what I found out. So, I may talk to a, a customer for 15 minutes on the phone. It could be two hours. Right. And we're talking about their whole project. I've already seen their house on Google Earth. I've already gone to property record search. I know a lot of those measurements. Right. Or they sent me a picture you yep. know, of their house. We talked about the layout. And then we've already talked pricing. Yep. So we get to the end of that. And I've already talked about our process. Yep. So we get to the end of that conversation. And they're like, and a lot of people were like, hey, let's do this. I'm not, and then I would say, I'm going to email you a formal proposal with these six options we just discussed. Right. The next step is for us to do our due diligence, do the pre-construction visit where we come out and actually draw it out, get all of our exact measurements, end up with the blueprints. Yeah. You, you know, know so... Just real quickly, are these processes documented? In other words... When they decide to fire you and get a good salesman in, will, they, yeah. will, they, will the new salesman be able to follow these processes, or, or are they mostly in your head? or, or? Five bucks cash will get every note that I ever <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Maybe I could sell that back. There you go. Yeah. We have, we'll, we'll put your... Uh, or you create a course and you sell it online yeah. to other salespeople. There you go. $5.95. $5.95. Yeah. Is that $595 or $5.95? <laughs> well, you know, hey, if I just say $5.95, some people are going to send me $5.95. Yeah. Some guy's going to send me a check for $595. There you go. <laughs> so why? $5.95. I'm, I'm good with either one. It's like you sold a hundred courses. How about $9.99? <laughs> Yeah, but then you got to give them a, if they act now within 12 hours, you get another one. Just pay <laughs> yeah. separate shipping and handling. I don't want to. I don't want to get into that. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, oh, but but I had. So that really worked well. Okay. Because if I get with this Corona and Mondays are you know because you have people over the weekend, so Mondays are always when the busiest. people are calling and yeah, you know, so you get 20 leads. In one day, yeah. On Monday, you know, I mean, I can't go you, see all those people because on Tuesday it's going to be eighteen leads. Wednesday is going to be, fit, you know, yeah. so it's almost. And it's not that I'm qualifying them, right? But we're having phase one is what I like to call it. This is phase one of our process. And I usually call this the connect call. Okay. Where it's five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Hey, who are you? What do you want? Why do you reach out? What's in your mind? This is the typical budget. Does this sound good? Should we talk further? Does that make sense? Or you no, that not it happening? does, but, but mine's even 
less formal than that. Sure, so it sure. could be five minutes. It could be two and a half hours. Wow. I'll let them dictate that. Well, I, and that's I, where I would say like the next step would be an exploratory call where you're really exploring all the options. And so what it sounds like to me, and I'm, I'm talking very formal here. I know you're not doing formal, but if I were to step back, What's but if I have is, one of those tuxedo party shirts, you're yeah. like, I'm, I'm informed, but I'm here to party. Well, what's <laughs> happening is you're, you're combining your connect call with your explore no, call. No, I am. And, 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 and so that's when it happens is it's going two and a half yeah, hours. Yeah, and I, and I let the customer decide. Decide, because sometimes they just start chirping like birds. Like, yep. well, here's what I have. Here's, you know, so we go through that. But I, I had kind of the validation of that whole thing is I had... Um, um, one uh, customer tell me i learned more talking to you on the phone than the two other people that came out here hmm. that's and a really said, important you, thing you are more informative you explained it blah 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 than people that were actually here so when i'm talking to people and i let them know hey i'm not qualifying you right but a lot of this phase one we can do over the phone. Mm -hmm. I don't mind the, the next one and the next one and the next one, um, but I can do all this over the phone. You know, and you know what? Customers like that. They do. Because they didn't have to leave work early. They didn't have to go in late. Um, if they said, well, both of us work, we don't get home till six, we can meet you at night at six. Well, guess what happens at 6.05? The kids want dinner. Right. And they got to leave at 6.30 to go to soccer practice. Yeah. So they were able to, we were able to do all that exploratory mm -hmm. conversation. On the phone. On the phone. That's good. So I want to back up just a little bit. Uh, one, this is for inbound process, an outbound process where you're calling on people. You're not doing any of that really. It's all inbound. No, people, it, yeah, people yeah, are coming no to cold you. Call. Yeah, no this, cold, no yeah, cold calls. No cold calls. This coming. is all inbound. So it's a different process if you are doing outbound, but we're talking inbound. The second thing is you said that she learned more from you than anyone else. And I think there's really two parts to that. One is that you have a lot of knowledge and that you also tr do a lot to educate the customers. Sure. But how many of us have been inside of a college class where there's a lecture and we don't learn anything? A lot of us. And the reason is because we're not interested. And what you have done is you've really listened to them and you're educating them on what they actually want to know and what they're interested in. Right. And that's a really big component that people don't realize is they sit there and they start going on through their spiel of education, but the person doesn't care because it's not what they are interested in learning about. They have specific thoughts and questions and those are the things that need to be answered. Well, they're also, Khalil, it's something that you've talked about in the past, but there's a vocabulary. There's a... Mm -hmm. A ten level technical uh, joist. You use the word joist. I yeah, mean, a lot. Everybody listening here probably knows what that is, but a lot of people don't. It, they think, well, that's yeah. when you put your finger in a socket, you get a joist, right? Yeah. No, that's a jolt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but bringing it to the right level and putting it in terms where they understand it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you obviously that's a strength. Yeah, and, and that's that's one thing you have to watch out for. And I'll catch myself, and, and I'll I'll tell people, hey, if I use a term, because this is my world, this is where I live, right. this is what I do every day, it's all common sense to me. If ever I mention anything that's above, tell me. Yeah. Just say, hey, slow down. And I'll, oftentimes I'll catch myself and I'll right. say, hey, what I just said, was that too much shop talk? Yeah. Because I don't want to get into that. Oh, we could uh, take that fifth flexor valve off and uh, yeah, reverse no, I, cantilever okay. that flobus. Yeah, you know, exactly. And then it'll work slick. Yeah, that's so what my yeah. cousin in caramelization. Well, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about caramelization. You know, I, I've used that word three times. Oh, I, well, I've used it mostly in context of talking about that podcast we did. But here's here's a word that people need to have, and it's our go. It's French word A R G O T, and it is a specialized vocabulary. Okay, so. If, if you're talking hydraulics and you're talking pressures and valves and, and sensitivities and all that, that's an argo. So we try not to speak in an argo. Right. And that's one reason I won't use the word argo, argo again because it's <laughs> argo. So, yes. But we'll, we will go with caramelization. However, we're, we're going astray, aren't we? Aren't that's we? okay. That's okay. <laughs> I want to I talk about the process a little bit more. And 
you know, I want to talk about the qualifying a little bit. I think okay. at the onset of coronavirus, we worked together on changing some of the process of how people almost qualify themselves for you before you even talk to them. And what we did was we changed the lead form that right. people fill out on your website. Right. Before it was a contact form that was, I think, name, email, subject, message, Just submit. Not, not even that. It was like name, phone number, address. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. That I mean, was about it, was, it. It was, yeah. It was pretty basic. Yeah. And so what we went through is we went through and, and said, okay, what are all the questions that are preliminary questions that qualify somebody? Right. Everything from is there a pool on site to how many people do you have in your family? How many people do you usually entertain? Yeah. How often do you, how entertain? Often do you entertain? Do you have a, a pet, like a dog? Do yeah. you... Um, What's the other one? So what size is the pad that you're thinking about? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's What's just... your time frame? Basically, so. it, yeah, it takes about... If we look at the data, it takes people about five minutes to fill out, right? So it's, it's pretty yeah. expensive, but they can also upload two photos of their backyard if they want, where they can send you a photo of, hey, this is the back, and here's a different angle or whatever. No, that's right. That's right. And so I want to ask, like, <clears throat> and maybe this has been awful and that's fine, but... How does that make your job of that first phone call easier or worse, or does it not affect it at all? No, it does help. Uh, it's, it's caused them to think a little bit. They've, some of them have actually measured. Yeah. You know, they've gone out and, because they let me know what on that form about the size. Um, it does get them to start thinking. Yep. Yeah, you know, and if they're going to go through and fill out that form, and it doesn't take there that long, go. but even that's quite a process right there. Then they're at least serious about talking to somebody. Yeah. How uh, many more? Uh, just curious, and you, I don't know if it would change, but how many more form submissions do you think you would have gotten incoming leads if it were the old one versus this one? You know, the and the crazy thing because this is Corona year, so you can't yeah quantify yeah, but for Corona. Those, uh, I feel like you probably would have gotten a lot more. Pardon me? I think you would have gotten a lot more had we not changed the form. But I think they would have not been qualified. No, you're You would right. have been getting these tire kickers like, oh, a pergola is not 400 bucks? Yeah. No, no, you're right. You're right. Um, no, but that, that form definitely helps. And if nothing else, it helps when I first call them. Exactly. Because I know. You know, um, I'd mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of times you, know, you can go to Google Earth, yeah. but in this area, if I go to Google Earth and Google our neighborhood, mm -hmm. it that that picture was taken in March of 2015. Really? I, because that's when they you started my project yeah. at the other house, and the patio was under construction, you know, the tear out, so I know, you know, so sometimes I'll go to Google Earth and it's just a plat of land in a new neighborhood it hadn't been developed yet, but on their HubSpot form, yeah, you know they took a picture. Of the you know, patio. we need to uh, petition Google. That's a good. We'll do that after this. They have, <laughs> they have the satellite view and they have street view. Yes. And we need backyard view. <laughs> we do. Now, why can't they do that? Well, here's another thing. Like my, I get all these like Siri and Alexis, or Ale I get all of them mixed up. But the one that's in your car that you put. That tells you where to go, the uh, GPS. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it can tell me there's a traffic accident one mile ahead. That it just happened thirty seconds ago. Yeah. But Why that can't? bridge has been out for six months, and you and you still gonna want me to go over I that have, bridge? I have and to I, give And you. I've gotten up to there. I'm like, Why doesn't it know that? Yeah, why don't they know that? But they know that there was. A I I have to. This is Didn't important. This is know. important. A gal I went to high school or uh, college with is the voice on Mercedes version of GPS. Wow. So you're talking. To, like I won't real, say her whole really? name, but her first name's Marilyn. I couldn't believe it. She is the, and it may that's been like six seven years. So maybe maybe, maybe it's changed. artificial now. But that's pretty. Interesting. You were talking to Marilyn if you were talking to you. Wow. So Mercedes, um, awesome. you've kind of described the sales process, but I, I, I want to go through all the way from <coughs> like somebody fills out a form on the website okay. to they are sitting on their back patio, right? Okay. So uh, just kind of lay it out. How does that happen? Yeah. So, you know, I get their information. I send them that text. They say, hey, that'll be great. I call them up 
and starting to get a little bit of feedback. Hey, talk, you know, talk to me about your project. What are you thinking about doing? So that just kind of goes into that. Mm -hmm. uh, what'd you call it? Not the discovery or what you, Oh, the connect and the exploratory call. Yeah. I got to write those down. <laughs> You're more important than you thought. Connecting. I'm doing a, two things. Yeah. Connecting and, and you thought it was just one. Yeah. Um, so we start talking about it and then I may say, all right, based on this, we're looking at a 10 by 20 uh, pergola and our range, depending on the size of the cedar, is going to be this much. If I go 12, if I make it this size, this size, this size. So I start giving them options. And then I'll say, do we want to, do you want to schedule? Because I owe it to them. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't know the size of their patio, I'll give anybody my pricing. Well, I want okay. to talk about that. Let's yeah. pause in the process. We're talking about pricing. Okay. You actually have pricing. And I think for a lot of contractors in this space, that it's kind of variable. It's like you don't know going into the meeting. They're kind of just throwing a number, it feels like. But you guys actually have it by square foot. Is that right? Yeah. But by also by like size of beams. Yeah. Well, the square footage, the, the size of the cedar. Yeah components is going to translate into a price per square foot gotcha so okay. basic and i think it's you have bronze silver gold yeah and the bronze is a certain size of cedar yeah this so is like eight is larger. by eight six by six twelve by six twelve by six, i mean that's eight by eight. okay right. that's what and you then mean. based on square footage that's the price right calculated. now there's add-ons yeah we can do privacy walls we right. can do fan mounts we which increase barn doors. is that does that increase the square footage price or is that just an add-on just separate so i separate. will itemize that gotcha okay you know and it, it's funny going back to these trade shows um you know people would walk around and they're they're gathering information that's why they go to the trade show and they go to the fair for mm -hmm. a corn dog you know um and the first fair i worked um you know i'm learning from some of the other guys are hearing them talk and you hear the other people in the other booths. Well, we'll just have to have somebody come out. And exactly. Give you no, I'll give you pricing right now. This, I'll write it down because that is a this game is changer. So, I hate yeah, it. it's so important. Marcus Sheridan in his book, they ask you answer. Gosh. He said, "What do people, even at the website level, what do they want to know? They're going to find out. What do they want to know? One of the first things anybody wants to know on some complex thing is how much how is this going to cost? Yep." Another one of his standard questions is, if I don't use Green Elky, who should I use? Yeah. Well, are you kidding me? On my website, I'm going to talk about my competitor? What more powerful recommendation is there to your honesty and your concern about them than you say, you don't even talk about us. Say, well, here are three pretty good companies based on what I've yeah. heard. And answer the question. And, and everybody wants to know what's going to cost. You can't, I mean, you guys have come up with a really good system to give ranges. It's not yeah. always possible, but you can say at least, you know, here's a range. A swimming pool costs from 20000 to $150,000. Yeah. And here are the things that matter. Square footage, do you want a waterfall? Do you want a river? Do you want a, you know, we're talking swimming pools because I don't know much about pergolas. Yeah. But, but anyway, just it, great point, you guys. Yeah. No, so, they but that's know what they, that. and you know what, right then, it's almost like, you're credible. All right, you're my person. And some of that may be, like Beautiful. I told you, the lady that said, I'm, I don't need to talk to anybody else. I found who I want to build. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you just, you're just honest. And you yeah, asked me a question, I answered it. I answered it. You know, yep. what, what, do, what do you bake that potato at? 350. <laughs> Not, well, you got to come over to my house. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Okay, so you're, you're in the exploratory call. You, you're giving them pricing right away. Yes. Okay. So at that point, they may say, "All right, let us think about it. We'll call you back." Yeah. Perfect. I didn't take up any more time at their house. They didn't take up any more time at my house. You know, talked to a guy yesterday. We had this conversation. I gave him about eight different prices. He's like, "That that's perfect." He said, "Let me talk to the wine, and if that's what you know, now we know." then you can come out. So I've told him that the only thing left was just to draw it out. We already yeah. had pricing. You know, so I saved him time and I saved myself time. Mm -hmm. Okay. People don't like, all right, now you're coming into, into my house. Yeah, especially nowadays. Yeah, especially nowadays. You know, one, 
and I love the ones when they say, hey, just meet me around back. Yeah. But, but otherwise, I'm walking through your house. What are you, you know, I've been come in your space. Sometimes people, if we can handle all of our business on the phone, it, it you know, a lot yeah. of times I go in backyards, oh, excuse the mess, you know, I haven't done this, haven't done that, you know, which that's fine. But yeah. so a lot of times that on the phone, and at first during this corona thing, when I was kind of forced to do it on the phone, mm -hmm. I didn't know how that would work. I had customers tell me, you mean we can do all this on the phone? Yep. Are you kidding me? Yeah. They're like, perfect. So do you um, ha, ha, do you show them some, I mean, you got photographs that you take, or do you refer them to your website, refer or do you our, send them to? Yeah, I like to drive people to the website. Okay, and then And that's say, another look thing on that people don't do enough as contractors is having examples good of picture. good photos and a, a lot of examples of their work. And you guys have do a great job of that. I mean, almost to a fault, there are like thousands of pictures yeah. that they can look through on the yeah. website. So that's super helpful for you, right? Well, it, it, it is. And also it, it kind of validates you as a company. Yep. You know, we're not Jimmy in a truck. Right. Yep. Not, not that I have anything against Jimmy. I mean, he works <laughs> hard. Uh, but I, you know, a couple of weeks ago speaking with one, one lady, she said, we always, any project we ever do, we get three or four quotes. She said, but I'll tell you right now, she said, your website was the number one website of the ones we looked at. Yeah. So that automatically validates yep. you. Then also, if I drive you to, to my website to look at photos, then you may see something in there that you like. You may see a fireplace. You may see a privacy wall. You, it's just exposing you to more of what we do. Yep. And because not every pergola is the same. Yeah, every, you're answering another question that yeah. they're asking, like, what do these things look like? What yeah. are my options? Yeah. yeah. Give them lots of ideas. Okay, so you're going through um, the, the pricing during this. Um, you've, you're doing this all on the phone. What's the next step? The next step, um, for some, I email them a formal proposal right then. Okay. And this is a big, this is a really big point because I know a lot of contractors are sitting there like, how, do, how are you doing that? Like, I, if I'm going to do a proposal, one, it's probably because you don't have your pricing done. But two, that's going to take me forever to sit down and write all that stuff out. What's the secret? Yeah. We use uh, software builder trend. Yep. Okay. And everything's built in, right? Right. So your pricing's there, all of your no, items. No, no. I, I go in and, and input list my pricing. Gotcha. But so all of your information is there. When we establish you as a lead, we have all of your information. Yeah. So I can upload photos, either photos that you sent me yeah. or photos that I took while mm -hmm. on property. Uh, then I go to the proposals and we have about, this is another, just since we're talking contractor, yeah. contractor, right? there's about 10 preloaded PDF documents that when I send a proposal, they're automatically connected. One's my certificate of insurance for workers comp. Yep. One's my certificate of insurance for general liability. One's my contractor license. Yep. Then I've got the warranty information on the polycarbonate, which is the material on top of the pergola. Then I created a Word document addressing HOA and permitting. So I've all of this informative, yep. that's already there. You're and more that's than credibility. answering questions they didn't even know they had to ask right. yet. Yep. That's right. They're, that's credibility. That's professional. That's covered. Yeah. 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 And, so that's, then, yeah. and how, how long does it take you to send a proposal? Okay. If I leave your house, so I, I just finished in your house, so so we finished that. Or on the phone. Or on the phone, yeah. right. Um, there's not a proposal that I've ever typed up that took me longer than 15 minutes. There you go. And Mo I most are five minutes. Yep. And, and here here's kind of the, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. We're not going to decide to buy a pergola today. Yep. If I give you an offer, a deal, you know, an offer today, if it sounds good today, it's going to be good tomorrow. It's going to be good together, good next week, next month. Mm -hmm. When I send you this proposal, if we're going to list a bunch of options, I'm going to itemize every option. Yeah. The total is not going to extrapolate and carry it over. The total is going to be zero. 
Yeah. So if you agree and accept that proposal, you're agreeing to a grand total of zero. <laughs> Here's all the options that we can build. And I'll get back to that momentarily. But so I leave your house. If I have good Wi-Fi and I have enough time between that appointment and my next appointment, by the time I get in my car, 10 minutes later, you got an email, formal proposal. And, and then you just kind of the way I work, you know, I have to get, I hate a to-do list and I hate things hanging over me. Right. I need to get it done that day. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's been plenty of times when I may finish up my last appointment at nine o'clock in the evening because it, it was just that busy, that hectic. Right. Now I've got, you know, say I was up way over there and I got 40 minutes to get home, you know, get home at 10 o'clock. Well, that proposal, I need to email that. I'll email it yeah. that night because I can't go to right. sleep knowing that I still have Let me, to. Clarification. Uh, what is it that you don't price? You said you got a proposal that totals zero. Yeah, but I gave you 15 different itemized options that okay, are in but the they're body. Priced. They are priced. Oh, okay. Yeah, so no, that, yeah, so they're going to make their choice. Yeah, they know all the pricing. Okay. So, so basically, and when I leave it with people, say it's on the phone. Basically, it's a proposal, not a quote. Like a quote is like the one, the price that they're going to get. Yes. For the it's a proposal. Yeah, because that... Like, it's an estimate. It's an estimate. Right. So for your house, I can give you 12 different pricing on the same patio. Now, if you... So I'll leave this with you if I'm talking on the phone or I'm at your house. If you decide to move further, all you have to do is accept that proposal. Yep. You're not agreeing to buy 10 pergolas, two pavilions, an outdoor kitchen, and a fireplace. All you're doing is you want Green Oaky to do something in your backyard. Yeah. So, like I met with a couple yesterday, and it was, you know, their structure was going to be a $20,000 structure. I gave them two different options on mm -hmm. size. Because it was shingled pavilion, et cetera, et cetera. I said, if you decide to do something, all you had to do is accept that proposal. Then we're going to come out to do the pre-construction visit. That's when we drill down and get all the specifics. So if we pull up and you say, hey, we changed our mind. We don't want that $20,000 structure. We just want a $3,000 pergola over there. Perfect. That's fine. It yep. doesn't matter to us. We're, we're here to meet your needs. So, so we're not going to be like, oh, you just want a 3000 We thought it was twenty. Right. No. So, so it's very low key, low st stress, yep. so to speak. You know, and it's funny because, uh, you know, I've flipped a lot of houses or a lot. I've, my brother and I used to flip houses back in Nashville, kind of on the side. And um, so I've always enjoyed doing that. And then this house we're in now in this older part of town was built in 72. So we got right. it, did that. Anyway, the last thing we we just did was um, gutted the master bath and totally redid, like tore up the floor and all the plumbing and redid. Yeah. Anyway, going to you know we wanted a glass door, you know, so I had the guy out and said about how much I don't know, <laughs> don't know. What do you have? Enough? I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I'm like well, how you figure it out? Wow, well, got to get with this guy. Well, you know, and it's like, all right, he gave me no information. Right. But I talked to you on the phone. I came to your house. Before I leave your house or before I get off the phone with you, you know all my secrets. You know every yep. dollar. And the only way it gets bigger is if you grow it. Mm -hmm. You make it bigger. You know, but you have everything you need to know from me. Yep. And then invariably at some point in that whole process... I hit your budget amount mm -hmm. without trying to hit your budget amount. Yep. I'm not sitting there looking at you thinking, all right, when, when am I going to How much there? more can I get out of it? Yeah. Or when can I get, you know, when did I hit their number? Because right. I don't care. Because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sell you a pergola that day. Yeah. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just there to give you, give you the answers you wanted. Yeah. Because you, because you didn't walk up and say, we want to buy a pergola. No. 
I want to change my backyard. We've been thinking change about my life, doing this. Yeah. My We're, we want to add to here. We're mm-hmm. thinking about this. So you've given the proposal, which is basically a bunch of estimates of different yeah. options. What is the next step? You've sent over that proposal, uh, and you do it in a really fast manner. Yeah. Right? And I think that makes a difference for the customer as well. It's top of mind. They can see it right there. I'm sure you get comments like, whoa, that was fast. Yeah, I get comments, and they'll say, well, we had a guy that come out three weeks ago and still hadn't heard back from Oh, that. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So you've done that. What's the next step? The next step is so you, you approve it. Okay. You, you and your you and your spouse. How do we approve it? Do we sign something? Do we click Online, something? Online, you go back to your proposal. Okay. Uh, which is stored in the clouds, wherever that is. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's in the clouds. Uh, I can resend it to you, open the proposal. There's a tab that says approve or accept. Yeah. Click on that. You can e sign it, it, scribble it. Yep. And then that's all the paperwork, period. So you just, then our system toggles everybody yep. at Green Oak, we know. They have signed and they've approved it. Approval, uh, proposal accepted. And so what happens, uh, they have to, there's a deposit, isn't there? Here's what we do. So they accepted and say there were 10 different options on there. Yeah. So that's when you're going to get a call from our office saying we need to schedule the pre-construction visit. Yeah. Um, So the client's first financial obligation is $500. And what's that for? Technically, that gets you on the schedule, reserves yep. your date for the build. But really what that does <clears throat> is when Kevin, our owner, comes out to do the pre-construction visit, he may be at your house for three hours, and then he's got two more hours back in the shops. So he's got five or six hours into your project, okay? Because he's drawn out all the blueprints, yeah. like buildable to scale. Right. Then if you change your mind, yeah, you know, so it's almost, and that 500 goes towards the cost of the project. So uh, I would encourage other contractors, you know, up to a point, all, my time's free. I never charge for me to come out and all that's free. But once you decide to be a customer, you know. Start paying. You somebody, start paying. they need to get some skin that's, in the that's game. That's just so brilliant because I had an irrigation company back in the early 90s. We do. We drew everything. Yeah. I remember I had a friend say one time, I'll let you uh, bid my yard. And I said, well, I'll let you wash my car. Yeah. <laughs> because we go out there and spend three hours design, drawing, and, and then we'd also put out some prints for maybe big apartment complexes. And then yeah. they'd farm those out to other people and let them bid it. No, finding a way, bidding is so expensive. And yeah. No, you're I, right. You're, the drawing design part. You're right. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. And, so do you ever get pushback? Because I know a lot of contractors are like, I can't charge that. Or they're, they're like, oh, no, someone would never accept that. But so do you ever get pushback from customers on that? On the 500 On the $500. Or... If I have, I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Now, you know, because it's almost, okay, so wait a minute. You want me to, you've accepted my pricing. Now you want me to come out there, my owner, and invest six, seven hours of his time. Yep. And what, what if you change your mind? Well, I'm not going to. Well, yeah. people do. And you know what, what started that? Because used to it was, hey, we're going to do that. That's part of the process. Nothing. You know, and there, there's always rules in society, you know, in life because something happened. That's why you see a stop sign at that old intersection because right. somebody got waylaid. <laughs> you know, that's why that traffic, yeah, the railroad right. Things that think because well, we some, see on TV all the time these people advocates and the, the little old lady who the roofing contractor came out and got half down then got the other half and never even started yeah. the job. So I no, think that's right, where that's some of that. But if right. they trust and they own it, um, yeah. No, so haven't really got pushback. Uh, what kind of what started that whole thing? We had and this was a repeat customer. Uh, he had moved houses and uh, said, hey, I want y'all to build here. And so we go out and do the pre-construction visit. We even went ahead and cut all his stuff, blah, blah. And uh, then it came time for the build, and he's like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. It's like, do what? You know, so, you know, contractors, you, know, you can't get 
you, you donate enough of your time or you invest <laughs> enough of your time into a project, but you draw the line at some point. All right, yeah. I've invested, that's as much of my free time as you get. Yeah. If we're going to proceed now, I've got to call in the big dogs or we've got to put more assets into this. You, you got to put a little yep. up front, $500 you know, is, is oh, not, very not, minimal. But know. now I want to ask, when do you guys start cutting stuff? Is it okay. r right after that? All right. So hypothetically right now, like if you want me to come build a pergola at your house, even though we work six days a week and we're very efficient, et cetera, I'm mid March that far out. So if I give you a proposal today, this is October. So you're six months out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or that's five, five yeah. months. Um, <clears throat> hypothetically, I give you a proposal today and you accept it. We're coming out to your house next week to draw, do all the blueprints, get everything drawn out. <clears throat> that way we're locked and loaded. Yep. If something happens and we can right. move you up, we can. We're not, you know, 11th hour racing over there and measuring, you know, right. doing that. So. When I'm three weeks out, so say I give you March the 21st. When I'm three weeks out from your build, I get half my money. And then when I'm finished, I get the other half. So that, that's Good. your financial obligation. Here's another thing. <clears throat> it's funny, used to when I started, we would get a third down. Yeah. Um, yeah, third deposit. No, no, no. What was it? Hang on a second. No, we get 25% down. 75% at the end of the job. Because you like being a bank. Pardon me? Because you like being a bank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but psychologically, people can't handle that. Well, not only that. They can handle the 25%. Sure. But when you finish that 75 is Pretty a tough. Yeah. Yeah. So that didn't dawn on me until we had that old house, you know. Yeah. They were rid of it, had it painted. You know, the whole exterior had to do a lot of prep work, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and so the guy that was doing the work said, I get a third when I start, a third after all the prep work. So the first day I break out the actual paintbrush, I get the other third. And then the final third when I'm finished. That's when it dawned on me when I wrote him that third check that was the same as the first two. I didn't have a problem right. writing that third check because psychologically I was used to it. And yep. it wasn't that larger amount. Right. Well, no, know, so say, yeah. say that job was $21,000. I didn't write, you know, a 7,000, then a 14. I wrote three sevens. Right. So from a contractor standpoint, and I talked to a psychologist, uh, not my. The one that in your person not my court ordered yeah. psychologist, <laughs> um, and they said, Yes, yeah, psychologically, yeah, three problem. easy payments right. out of $7.99. Seven ninety nine. <laughs> so, uh, I think what also psychologically you're talking about from the customer perspective, but I think from the contractor perspective, what we see a lot is they don't believe that they can ask for that much money up front. Oh, they would that's too much for me to ask up front until it's done. And so they do ask for that 25% rather than the 50%, or they ask for nothing and everything at the end of the job. You know, when, when we changed from the 25-75 split to 50-50, nobody said a word. Exactly. Nobody said exactly. a word. And you know what? If you, if you don't trust me at this point, mm -hmm. I don't need to build your project. Yep. Absolutely. You know, um, you either trust me or you don't. Well, it's it's mutual trust. You have to trust them too that they're going to actually pay you. Yeah. Well, no, you're I mean, exactly. Well, two and ways I would, in a <laughs> And I would encourage you know any contractor, you know, you're vetting that customer mm -hmm. as equally or as much as they're vetting you. I may not want to build for you. Right. Yep. And sometimes the best customers you ever got were the ones you never took. Right. That you fired, and we've told people we've, you know, yeah. I've recused myself. <laughs> I'm like, you know what, this is. Hey, that's I, our I that's our go. That recused. Our go. Yeah, that's that's one of those words. 
Recuse. <laughs> recuse. I mean, you told them you weren't going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Is that what that means? Recuse. I just, that was another caramelized. word. Caramelization. Caramelization. Recuse. Yeah. This Ar- is an educational show. But see, like that argo. If I write it out, just the redneck in me, I'm going to pronounce the T. Argot. Argot. Yeah. Argot. It's snails. No, Argot. that's snails. Um, Escargot. Never. Mind. Yeah. So I would. I would be leery if somebody didn't want to pay me something. Yep. You know. Right. Um, Absolutely. You know. So I have to tell you, we put in sprinkler systems. A lot of them were just residential sprinkler systems, and we sold one to a man, and got we we would get ten down, then we put them in in two days. And we yeah. went to get the check, and the, the lady came to the door, and she said, "Well, I'm not going to pay you right now. I'm going to run it for a few days and see if I like it." <laughs> Yeah, it was but, installed. I know. So what that's awful. Pull the like, pipe out. Turn it on, and it's yeah. working. It, you know, if there's ever a problem, I'm going to yeah. take care of it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's it's funny how people dodge that. They'll dodge yeah. that final payment. Oh man. Right. You know, you'll be out there, and it, I'm sure they this is make, with yeah. our granite yeah. buddy. Yeah. You know, the irrigation guy, the homeowner. Yeah. They're watching you. They're yeah. like, man, they got their sweet tea. They're sitting out there watching you put it. And then as they see you start to finish. Yeah, they're inside, and you can't find them. So you knock yeah. on the door to get that, not there. Right. You know. Then you call them. Up. Oh, we had to go to the store. You know, we'll get you a check. Some other. It's like when you. <laughs> yeah. We knew yeah. we were gonna be done today. You know. So. So so let's go back to the process. You have um, you've collected your fifty percent deposit three weeks before. That's yes. I'm assuming that's when you guys start cutting. Yes, that's when we'll. Pull the cedar, yep. match it to the blueprints, okay. cut everything, then all the cedar components. So everything's been pre-cut. Right, before your, you... Before, yeah. Then all the cedar takes a bath in a stain tank. We built our own proprietary... That's another word you write down, proprietary. <laughs> yeah. Um, stain tank. So all the cedar gets stained. We set it out, it dries. We bring it out, put it up like a puzzle. And so you put, you put it out, and how long does an install take? I mean, from the shortest to the longest you've ever seen? Uh, well, at my house, I've got one that's a 16 by 16 out by my pool area. Yeah. Uh, when my guy showed up, unloaded it, took four hours, and it was done. Wow. So... No, there's some that you guys are doing some masonry, some outdoor kitchens. Oh, yeah. We, we've, you know, done projects that were several weeks long because we're building, it's a pool house, you know, with the <laughs> kitchen, with the fireplace, with the bathroom, with running plumbing. But if we're just doing pergola. If we're just doing pergola. A few hours. Yeah. Most pergolas are a day. Like yeah. a 10 by 20, that's a day. Yeah, you know, twelve by twenty, fourteen by twenty. That's a day. Um, if I'm building just a, a pergola, even a complex pergola, if it's more than three days, that's a really large. I mean, and you're five, you're five pergola. months out on that schedule. That's a lot of mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of yeah, projects I mean, pre-sold. Well, yeah, when so you're, when so you're getting not, twenty leads over the weekend, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a pretty big deal. So um, the construction's done, and then what? What does payment look like is it you're waiting on that check or are they paying online some pay online uh some will mail it in some give us a check when we're finished you guys also do financing where you get everything up front right we do financing it's through synchrony which is what which you get it all uses. at the end at the end <laughs> oh you get <laughs> it all at the end. brothers okay. yeah so you can go on our website and apply for synchrony um then if you if you do synchrony the only thing that you're out personally is that $500 initial, right? Right. Then if you go through Synchrony, Synchrony pays me at the very end. Just set that um, Synchrony pays me at the very end. Yeah. So, and I don't mind that. So 18 months, same as cash. Yeah. No skin off your back. Sure. You know, from my standpoint, and I have to pay a fee. Right. But you know what? I'm you, guaranteed. I, so when, I, when I call Synchrony and say job complete, they put the money in my account. Yeah. I don't have to chase anybody down. Exactly. So synchrony pays me my money. Yep. And then that's when your 18 months start. Okay. Now what about like warranty um, that for after the job's done? Is yeah. It- like on the polycarbonate uh, from the factory, it has a 10-year warranty. Okay. From the manufacturer. And that includes hail. 
if you read our legal terms, it'll say one year craftsmanship. Yeah. Because we've always had that contract, part, right. part of a pro forma contract. Sure. Um, here's what I've found at Green Oaky, which is another reason I don't mind talking to people because, you know, like I alluded to earlier, you know, my philosophy and how to treat people, take care of people is aligned with Kevin's. Right. Okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Um, if anything ever happens, we take care of it. Yeah. You know, and I saw that. I'd been there probably two months, and a customer calls up, and they had a post that was warped. Mm. Said, hey, we got a post that's warped. And so I said, all right, let me get your name and, you know, number. And um, so then I went to Kevin. I said, hey, I said, uh, they've got a warped post. Uh, he said, well, just grab another 8 by 8 and go replace it. Have the guys replace it. I said, it's been more than a year. He said, it doesn't matter if it's been five years. Yeah. We replace it. Yeah, so, that's good. And we've had sometimes people, you know, things go wrong. Or right. things, you know, it's cedar. If you're like, hey, this split beyond all splits or this warped. So I've had customers that call and say, or people that call and say, hey, we've got a post that mm -hmm. split. I can't find them anywhere in our system. <laughs> and I'll say, I, I can't find anything on your bill to give me any information. And I say, oh, we did. We bought this house, and your pergola was already here. And we <laughs> saw the name. Like perfect, we'll be out there to fix it. They didn't buy that pergola from me. They bought the house. Pergola right. just came with it, and we warranty that too. Wow, like, that's cool. over So time, you don't you have to, you don't have to do that, right? right. And you, you know, sometimes but I tell people, that's your house. This is my pergola. If I'm gonna put my name on it, yeah, I'm always gonna put my name on it. And a lot of times. You shine as a company when you do something that's totally unexpected. Yeah. Absolutely. I did not know that y'all would do that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. You make a raving fan out of you, too. They're going to mention that. Then they yeah. trust if you. doing just good work doesn't get mentioned. Yep. But right. going beyond, somebody say, I can't believe these guys. Yeah. So no, you're right. You're right. So I want to um, kind of pivot now. I, that's a, I, I love the process. I think there's some really great takeaways that people can get from that. Everything from how they're intaking leads that are inbound, making sure they're qualifying them really adequately beforehand to make those calls a lot easier and to not get a lot of tire kickers, all the way to the proposals being electronic and being able to send them in 10 minutes rather than you know, two hours or five hours, because that adds a lot to your plate and overwhelms you and stresses you out. Yeah. Right? Then also the the fact that you know your pricing and you're able to say it right on the phone on the first call if you need to, it make, brings a lot of credibility and trust. Collecting a $500 deposit just for your drawings, collecting 50% three weeks before so you can get the materials, right? There's so many different lessons yeah. that, that contractors need to think about as they go through their sales process and not enough of them do. What I want to ask you though, is if I'm a contractor and I'm doing the sales myself, right? So let's go back to maybe when Kevin, I know that he had a salesperson, but maybe he was doing the selling. Why do I need to hire a salesperson like you rather than continue doing it myself in your opinion? You can't do it all. Okay. If you want to grow, you you can't be the builder, the salesman, and the business owner, and the marketer. You can't do all that. You, you know, it's kind of like in our that first conversation we had. If you're going to start a business, get you a great accountant, get a great lawyer. Yeah. Because you're going to need both of them. Okay. So it's kind of that. It, if you can ever replicate yourself, replicate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing these words down. We're going to list them right at the very end. They'll be in the show notes. R E P P L A I C K. Replicate. Replicate. We'll work on the. Okay. We may. They're going to be in the show notes, but they might be misspelled. <laughs> they're going to be under the section titled Argo. Argo. There we go. Okay. Back to okay. the topic at hand. Um, replicate. replicate yourself. Which that is very. You know, because that's your. That's your business. Sure. You know, like the granite guy. His father started, and he took that over. Yeah. For them to turn the reins of the face of their company over to somebody else, that's a 
Can I say ballsy? Yeah, sure. It's going into ballsy. Ballsy move. <laughs> Is there an E in that? B-A-L-L-S-Y? If you want it to be. I think it can be whatever we want. Uh, uh, <laughs> because that may be the only face or contact your potential revenue has with your company. Yeah. Um, what What am I going to benefit the most as a as a, as a owner whenever I hire a salesperson? If I hire a salesperson. Well, if you hire a sales salesperson, then you can you, you get that aerial view of everything. You know, you can if you want to go look at this project that's ongoing, you look at that. If you want to be in the shop, you know, or the warehouse facility watching production, you can do that. If you need to do office stuff, you can do office stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it may not uh, be true of you and Kevin, but one thing when you asked that question, Cleo, that came to my mind immediately is if you're the owner and you're bidding and everybody knows it, they can work on you on price. And you might you might be willing, oh, I'm going to give in. If you have a salesperson, you say, here's the price, and they go out and sell it, they just say, well, no, oh, that's our price. That may not be true of you guys, but I see that. Well, you know, like. And it, and it <laughs> happens to me, too. People know no, I can No, no, you're right. You're, you're right. But, you know, it's funny. We'll get and kind of, I remember, you know, one of, I learned this because I said it enough when I had, when my brother and I had the, the axle business out in Salt Lake in Nashville. Um, you know, we took really good pride in our work and, and we warranted and we backed it up more so than the OEM, the written, you know, we gave a better warranty to, the, to Honda than Honda factory gave to Honda. Right. Okay. So people would say, what well, do you match price? I'd say, I, I, I'll match their price when they match my quality. And that's not being, I'm not bragging, not being boastful, but if they're going to back up their product or instead of asking me to match their price, how about asking them to match my quality? Yep. How about asking them to match my service? I have one, one guy in, in Nashville, right there, right downtown Nashville, where West End and what others are great little pie shape, kind of like many New York City where they drop the ball. They, oh yeah, you know, Times, Times Square. Square. Anyway, there was a, a auto repair shop right there. You know, no telling what that property's worth. But anyway, I've uh, been there for forever. And that was one of my first customers in Nashville. Did I tell you all this story last no, time? No, not that I recall. So when we moved to Nashville and opened up the, the axle business there, we had sent out the flyer because that was right. before. Anyway, so they were one of my first customers. So a couple of years later, about two years later, um, the owner of Carco, spelled K-A-R-C-O, Bill is his name. Not C-O-E-T? No. no, no. <laughs> you got to be very careful. Don't, try, don't put a T where a T don't belong. Okay? Uh, anyway, he had a real scruffy voice. Uh, big guy. And... He called me up and I said, hey, I got this flyer from it. He mentioned one of my competitors. And uh, I said, I'm not familiar with that flyer. I said, he said, what do you think? I said, Mr. Bill, I said, I've got enough things on my plate, enough of my own problems. I can't worry about somebody else. I said, but asking, um, I said, comparing me to him's, it's kind of like comparing apples to oranges. And he said, which one are you, the apple or the orange? I said, which tastes better? <laughs> and he said, that's all I need to know. We never talked about price. He just needed that assurance. Right. And that's so, so much confidence in, what, on your part. Well, and here's another I mean, thing. Because it's true, but right, it's confident. And here's another thing I tell people. I said, all right, I'll entertain matching their price if, if they check these boxes. They have corporate insurance, general liability. They have workers' comp. They have a contractor license. They pay state taxes, okay? And all their employees are their employees. All of that stuff costs money. So, you know, if they check all those boxes, then we'll talk. But, but you know, it's, and that, 
I'll match their price if they match my quality. I mean, that's not bragging. That's just, I know like the axles and I know pergolas, how much blood, sweat, and tears you put into it. You know, that counts for something. You know, and and also, if so say I come out and I give you a price and you're going to beat me down <laughs> and I cave and I knock this off. Then I go to Khalil's house same size pergola, give him the same quote, and he doesn't beat me down. Well, then I, <laughs> I'm rewarding bad behavior just because right. you were, you know, so what about him? Right. You know, and I, and I don't artificially mark it up to bring it down, you know. No. That, that's, that's my price. Like when I'm talking to you on the phone, maybe I haven't seen your house. Maybe I haven't seen your car. Maybe... I don't know that you're a doctor. Doctors love telling you they're doctors. I'm a doctor. I don't care. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't care. My foot hurts. You know, the doctor. Okay. I'm a redneck. You know, I don't know <laughs> I'm telling everybody. <laughs> you know? So, so I'll tell yeah. you my pricing. We've already established that. Here's my minimum. Here's my maximum. It's going to be somewhere. We're going to take one of those numbers, the low and the high, Multiply it by your square footage, and that's our range. And we can be anywhere in that range, you know. So it's not this. It's not that minus fifteen, twenty percent, minus five right. percent, you know. And and you know. So to to for you just to come and beat me down. Yeah. That's why I would never. I just that I don't do that yeah and, and people come to my house do projects for me I don't take their pricing well I tell you what you, you quoted me 1500 I'll give you 1100 cash well that, that that doesn't mean you're not that oh and then I'm a business guy because I beat the guy down no you're, you're just a cheapskate yeah right. anybody can be a bully yep you know now say I come up and, and hey this pergola is 15,000 and then we're talking, you say, I need to be at 12.5. How can I get to 12.5? Yeah. That's totally different. Right. We can get there. We sure. can get there. But for you just to arbitrarily just, well, I'm, you know, I'll give you this much. I mean, you know, you, you don't go to Red Rock and tell them, hey, that double porch I've got for $28, I'll give you seventeen fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let, let me know. You know what's funny? Let me know how that goes. Let in, me know in, how that goes. In Morocco, um, in a lot of cultures, actually, a lot they. Yep. I mean, literally, that is the haggle is a part of it. I mean, at a restaurant. Um. Well, maybe, maybe not a restaurant, but about I mean, you. Yeah. I mean, about everything else. Like, you go buy a jar of jam, you might be haggling over it. You know, you buy an egg, you might be haggling over no. it. culture. I yeah, mean, I heard literally. That, yeah, and 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 I I know specific, and I've had. Sp- customers uh, from a certain country and it's a sign of weakness if they pay full price you know yeah every everything that you just said i mean i'm trying to think how to distill it but it involves respect yep you respect your customer and you ask not maybe in words that they respect you Mm -hmm. and when you have that relationship they get a good job, they get a fair price, you get a fair price, you get there's trust. And and all the back way back when you started with referrals and, and following up three years later with somebody who bought the house, all of that engenders respect, uh, as testified by other people. The referring party feels comfortable referring yeah. to you because but I, I love that notion of respect and it's a special message because I talk to a lot of clients and contractors who aren't. And fundamentally, that's kind of what's missing: self-respect. Like, oh, I got to have this job. I'm gonna. I'm weak. I'm in a weak position. I'm going to come yeah. down on my price or whatever. Or I don't want to ask for the deposit, the five hundred dollars or the half down because literally, I had one guy said I thought that would make me look weak. Uh, and I think no, it's, just no, the, that, it's just the opposite. No, it, it is. It is it makes you look like you've been there before well, and done that. No, that's right. And it's not like I just gave you a bid and. And, and I kind of tuck my head, hey, can I get some money now? Because yeah. no, we're very financially solvent. Yeah. To me. yeah. But, but it's, 
just part of it's part of it's part of it. And ninety five percent. Brian Tracy has a quote, and it's kind of equivalent to "fake it till you make it," but I don't like that. He says, "Act as if." So even if you don't feel confident in asking for a deposit and bidding for what you know you have to have, raise your chin up, look at the people, and bid it properly. Yeah. And don't discount. And eventually, Brian Tracy's point is, if you do that enough, you win a couple of those, then that becomes who you are. Well, So even if you don't have the confidence in their self-respect, act as if you do. Yeah. No, that's right. And and yes. It, and it's, just, it's part of the process, just like when I tell people our methodical process, I give you this proposal, whether in person or there. You accept it. We come out for the pre-construction visit. Then we have this schedule, we have this schedule, that 500 takes care of this, the deposit here. It's like, okay, you told me everything I need to know. But but going back, respect and trust. I had, this job's been maybe three years ago and it's, you know, where, wherever it was, somewhere up there. And so met with the wife, the husband wasn't there, met with the wife, gave her pricing, et cetera. And then uh, she accepted the proposal um and when kevin went out for the pre-construction visit the husband was there he was meeting with both and the husband said um, you're using green Oki. that was your most expensive quote and she said yep she said because i trust john and the husband said okay yeah trust and, trust and respect now i'm not always the most expensive quite often i'll go and they'll say man we you know, you're the cheaper, or you're right in the middle. You're all you are all about the same. But yeah, the trust and the respect, and are you going to be there after yeah. that last screw's turned? You know, when you put that granite countertop in, if I got a problem, you're going to come back. When I put that irrigation mm -hmm. system, can I call you in a year? You going you going to return my phone call? Mm -hmm. I remember you a sales know. call I was on one time with irrigation, and it was a. Uh, sales manager for a car dealership here in town, a big one. And we did all the explanations and all this, and he sat there and he said, well, now is there any negotiation on the price? And I said, yes, sir. I'll go as high as you want. Love and it. And he just laughed and signed Love that it. deal, and it was a, but it was so much fun. Now, here, here's one thing that, that I learned in this industry that I've applied at my house, and yeah. that I would encourage, you know, contractors and if anybody else is still listening, uh, besides my mother. Um, um, timing plays a difference as well. Like, um, I needed some irrigation work done at the house, just to kind of take a look here, because I planted some other stuff, just reroute this and right, that. So I called, yeah, Yes, so I called the irrigation company. I said, sometime in the next six months, Pick your slowest day of the year if you want to. Start some on this afternoon, finish it the next week. Just fit me in. Now, I didn't knock their price down, uh, but I gave them flexibility. And did that translate? Did I get a little better, better deal? May have, doesn't matter. But at least I was, because I, I'm, I know what time empathy. means. Yeah. Now, I started doing this about three, maybe four years ago. Um, it, I was meeting with a, um, a lady in June, gave her a price. And at that point, we were just 10, 12 weeks out. And I gave her a price, and she's like, oh, do you, or is there any kind of discount? I said, I'll give you a price for if I install it next on my schedule or after November 1st, the deer season in Alabama. <laughs> Just arbitrarily picked. I, I picked our off season, even though we build pergolas every day of the year. November first, get a little discount. So I started doing that, and by the time I got to July, December was already booked. So, so why, is, I, why is that important? I think that's a really important thing to focus here, here's on. Here's why, and then here's how I sell it to people. You're you're giving up something, you know, in in business law, you know. You give me an offer, you know, by counter offer, well, that's a new offer. You can either accept it or reject it. I've changed the game, mm -hmm. changed the terms. So I give you a quote for now, 
but if you give me leeway, you give me flexibility, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug you in, your job, be out there December 26th, okay? We're going to do your job the Christmas week between Christmas and New yeah. Year, so I can guarantee all my guys a 40-hour paycheck. Exactly. So what I'm doing that week, you're paying my labor. You're you're making my payroll for all my guys. And another I have one idea. lady, this is no lie. The next year, I met with her February the 8th. February the 8th. It was a big pergola. And she said, that's a little out of my range. What are my options? No. I know what she said. She said, what's your slow? I said, January 2nd. I knew where she was going. She was asking me, what's my slowest day of the year? I said, January 2nd. Because everybody's drunk, hungover, and nobody wants anybody <laughs> in their backyard. But if we can come in your backyard 11 months from now, and she signed the contract right then for the next January the 2nd. That's okay. wild. That's awesome. So from a contractor standpoint, it's a way to make payroll. Yep. Really. And that, because, you know, owning a business, if you've never owned a business, you know, there's nothing like waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning trying to figure out what where's the cash coming from where's the cash coming yeah, from yeah yeah absolutely and yeah so but also from the homeowner standpoint that's how you can if you let your contractor know hey fit me in put me in the slow time is there any financial that's benefit a, that's a quid pro quo this you know that yeah. and that's going in the book no that's Queen. good I, I think um I think that's a really good yeah, strategy for great. not only closing some deals if they do need a discount, but also for making your payroll, making your payroll <laughs> and scheduling out yourself because this is usually and Corona's changed this a while, but when we work with contractors, this is about the time where we start getting calls. They're about to go into their slow season. Hey, let's start yeah. working on their marketing, right? Well, yeah. now Corona's kind of changed that a little bit, and what's happened is they need to focus more a little bit more on organization, but. That's a way of preventing yourself from being in that situation where it's right. like, oh, we need jobs in December. We need jobs in January. Is hey, let's let's take these guys that they would convert if we would knock off five percent. Yeah. And let's let's change the game and say, okay, well, hey, we can do it later in the in the winter. Yeah. You get something for what you give up, and that's fair trade. It's yep. it's good for everybody. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Tip so I, I want to go back because, and I really do want to focus on this. There's two things that I want to focus on. One is about just hiring a salesperson. And you said it's important because you can't do everything. What should I be looking for in a salesperson as a contractor? If I don't have a salesperson or I don't feel like our sales team is strong enough, what do I need to do? Who do I need to be looking for? In your opinion, I know you're in not an opinion, expert on this, honest, but in your opinion. In, integrity. Yeah. Um, owns their mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like, you know, you don't have to be slick and, you know, just the, don't be the typical salesman, yeah. you know. Um, stereotypical salesman. Yeah, stereotypical. Yeah. You know, um, don't, don't try, don't brag, don't try to boast. So if I'm interviewing a salesman, you know, I want to know about you Yeah. because I'm hiring you. you and know? like, yeah, who would you hire? Is it someone that is, you know, do they need to have? Somebody that likes people. Okay. Likes listening. That, that they can they talk can, all day. They can talk. Yeah. You know. So how did you ever get the job? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's a good question. Well, I mean, it's kind of like, how did I ever get my wife? <laughs> good salesman. She was a smart, she made one bad mistake <laughs> on one bad So day. if I'm, I'm looking for this person, this outgoing person, um, what do I expect of them? What do I what do I set them up with? What should I give them? As a, as a good salesperson, what do you look for in a company? Somebody that'll back me, that'll stand behind me. Yeah. Because if, if I go out to sell your product, you better back it up because that's what I'm preaching out there. Mm -hmm. If you have yeah. a problem, you call us. Yeah. Okay. Don't throw your salesman out there. and We don't play that blame game, and I hate the blame game. You know, don't blame your owner. Don't blame your salesman. You know. Um, yeah, that's, it's just a, I mean, what, do, somebody do you need... that listens and talks and, and gets respect yeah. from people without asking for it. Right. Just because that genuine, 
you know, you got to have, you know, knowledge mm -hmm. of your product. Yep. Um, don't be afraid to, to, don't make up something, you know. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm trying to just kind of put well, my... Well, what, what, for you, like, would you do your job if uh, the company didn't have, if would you sell for a company that didn't have a really good website, for example, that wasn't bringing in leads for you? No, that's a that's a great point. If I had to go generate my own leads, or no, <laughs> but because you know how, and then we're gonna add eight hours to the day, right? You know, so give me the tools. Yep. So okay. what are the tools? I mean, you need something like Builder Trend where you can do the proposal in ten minutes. Yes. You wouldn't do your job if you didn't have something like that. Yes, and I can't be salesman, project manager, superintendent, and shop foreman at the same time. You need to be sales. You need to be sales. Yep. So, so a very so defined role. A very is, defined role. Yeah. And if, hey, if you're a Mr. Contractor, pay the guy on commission. Yep. Period. You don't, you know, eat what you kill. Yep. You know, so, and proof's in the pudding. Yep. What about, I mean, they need to be probably putting in, to be able to generate those leads, that means they've got to be spending money on advertising and, you no, know, advertising, trade shows. Trade shows. Uh, yeah. Set you up for opportunities. Set me up for success. I mean, yeah. well, why are you going to hire a sales guy, in, in, but you're not going to do the other stuff? Yeah. And you do know, I do, if, do you're you... gonna, if you're going to go down that path, and I want to grow my business, then I'm going to, you're going to have to invest money. Yeah. You know? Just like you found out the first two, three, four, five years of your business when you weren't, you know, you were bringing in money, but you weren't taking it home because right. you're reinvesting it. So the true cost of a salesman, you know, because he's going to pay for himself mm -hmm. out of commission, you know. Yeah. Hey, I remember when I hired my first salesman in Nashville on, on the axles. I'm like, I hope I pay you a ton of money because right. it was all commission. Right. So the more I pay him, the more I make him. Absolutely. But also factor in, I need a website. Yep. I need marketing. Good pictures. Good pictures. Yep. Yeah. So Rome wasn't built in a day, and this, you know, you got to give it a little bit of time. But right. the, the building blocks, and you're building towards the future. Yep. Uh, so, and is there ever an opportune time to hire a salesman? Well, if you wait till now is the great time, or I should have hired one six months ago. It's, you know, yeah. probably need to start a little sooner. Yep, absolutely. You know, to to give it time, because there's a learning curve. Even even though, yeah, you know, I was mechanically inclined. I've had businesses before when I was thrust into this new role in sales. Mm -hmm. uh, I've learned a lot since then. For instance, go out on my first call. And they say, we want to cover this entire patio. It's 20 by 40. <laughs> okay, that's 800 square feet. Here's your price. But that shoots anybody's budget. Right. Now, knowing, if I'd have known they ought to know now, I'd have given them about 16 or 20 different options. Probably would have sold them something. Yeah. Because they didn't need 800 square feet. Right. You know, but that's what, they, that's what they asked. So I wasn't listening. Yeah. I was listening, but I just didn't know. Right. Sure. So the the more the meaning behind the words. Yeah, you're if if you hire someone, yeah. if you're a contractor, they need to learn you mm -hmm. because they need to speak your lingo out there. They don't yeah. need to overpromise what you will not deliver. Right. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, I mean, last that, thing, I, I know that was not. That's all right. That, that's helpful. I think even those things are helpful for contractors to think about because they don't think about it in those terms. A lot from what whenever I hear people talking about hiring a salesperson, they do talk about hey they need to be outgoing, they need to understand the industry, they need to be able to hold a conversation, uh, take people to lunch or whatever it is, but they don't talk about the things that they need to be doing to set up that salesperson right. and find the best person. Yeah. And there are things hire like, somebody and say go get me some sales. Yeah, yeah. So that's much. not how it works. You've got to set that person up and for then success. And you're mad at them all the time. So yeah, um, I want to end our conversation with our quote of the day segment. And um, this is, I, I really like this, uh, your quote about uh, price. Do you remember it? Do I need to tell it for you? Yeah, um, I matched their price when they matched my service and my quality. But then you also say, and I, I also said, 
I don't sell on price because I don't buy on price. What do you mean by that? When the actual business, when I was in Nashville, the um, we bought all of our raw materials out of California. So I never saw the sales guy. I just called in the order for the ball bearings and the boots and the yes. clamps and the et cetera, et cetera. So he calls me up one day and the salesman, he's, and he, he rattled off. He said, what do you get for a 1989 Honda Accord left side automatic? What do you get for a Chrysler minivan right side, blah, blah. So I started giving him my prices that I sold to Brookhaven Auto. David Stanley died. Anyway, sure. gave my price. He said, you realize you're the most expensive axle in the United States? I said, okay. You know, he said, how do you do it? I said, because I don't apologize for my price, because I don't apologize. I don't buy, I don't sell on price because I don't buy on price. I pay more for higher quality products. Okay. Um, and most time it's not about price. Right. You see, did I tell you about when I had that? Uh, we 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 built the axles and we had an Acura dealer. Did I tell you this story last week? No. Or whenever it was. So, we stocked the Acura dealer with axles. So they put in two axles on a '89 Acura Legend. So the service writer calls me up a couple of weeks later and he said, "Hey, this is not your fault." He said, "I." He said, here's my situation. He said, this car came in and it had transmission issues. So while the transmission was out, we went ahead and put two new axles in, your axles, and then prepared the transmission. He said, we kind of messed up on the transmission. He said, the car broke down on the Lake Pontchartrain Bridge. <laughs> 26 miles out over the... Yeah, a couple of states away. He said, our owner thinks it's your axle. He said, but it's not. It's the transmission. But our owner thinks it's your axle. He said, what do I do? I said, have the vehicle towed, send me a bill for the tow bill. Take it to your Acura dealer down there, have them put two new axles in and I'll send them to to replenish their stock. Send me the tow bill, I'll ship them two axles, send me the rental car bill, and send me the hotel bill. Get all that totaled up, let me know what it costs. I'll pay it. Wasn't even my fault. You know, no, that has nothing to do with price, but that goes back to the service quality. I didn't have to do that. Probably thirty five hundred bucks. That's what it was. But I did it. You think that guy's ever going to go anywhere else? Right. Nope. He bailed him out. No. Could I have ever gotten out of that situation? Would they have ever bought from me again? He wasn't holding me hostage. This guy wasn't. He said, "But our owner." So I said, "Here's what we'll do. Send me a bill." Yeah. Customer for life. Right. You know, it's kind of that doing. Little that's things. really good. I mean, you didn't do it as marketing, but that's no. inexpensive marketing. No, it is. It, you know, so kind of that whole, that trust thing, like the lady at the fair. Yep. You know, that's my guy. I trust right. him. Yep. It's not about price, you know. When you're looking at building a pool, did yep. you get the cheapest guy? Is that really what you want? You want the <laughs> cheapest guy? You know, I can build you a swimming pool for $1,500 in a case of beer. <laughs> I, I'm not cash. cash. <laughs> No, you know, so it's not always about price. And I think we as contractors get hung up on price. But yeah. it's not always about price. The, the customer, go back to that neighborhood app. You got a good plumber? You, got you know, good... we're, we're talking about consumer type things when you say it's not about price. Uh, people argue that, well, if I'm bidding municipal jobs or state jobs or for some big GC, it is about price. And I still say it's not because they, if you're the low bid, but you don't show up, you can't do it, you don't have the workers comp, then it's not about price. No, that's right. Now you don't just get to add good old boy on top of that, but uh, no, it's no, never don't. completely about price. Right. Ever. No, you're right. 
there, um, there's an assumed level that they're going to get for that. And uh, what we always say, Khalil says, to the USP, unique selling proposition, you're giving them reasons other than price to buy from you. Right. Yeah. If they, no, you're right. If they it, tell you you're too high, that's just their excuse. For, no, that's fine. That's fine. And, and hey, if I am, I am. Yeah. You know, but yeah. but I, I got to make payroll. I got to yeah. pay my tax. I got to pay my mortgage for yeah. the building. Yeah. But kind of that, I don't sell on price because I don't buy on price. I put Great upper vote. end, like some of our screws that go in our pergola, some of those screws are $5 a piece, my cost. A screw. Yep. Okay, it's not a nail. So you start adding up that kind of stuff, you start adding up that I buy premium cedar, I pay extra for premium grade cedar. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Right. Yeah. You know, I take these little extra touches, I put extra stuff in there, like on that polycarbonate, I put the attachment underneath nobody else does. I'm spending more. Yep. Because it's quality. Yep. So it'll last longer. So yeah. So that's kind of the and that makes it easier when you someone does buy a green oaky pergola, sell their house, and someone sees that something's wrong. Usually, not, something's not wrong because you are focusing on quality, and so it doesn't yeah. really cost you that much to go do those no, things. That's so. right. That's right. Well, John, I really appreciate having you on. I know Martin does too, and um, we may bring you back again. Man, someday. I would love to come back. You know, it's kind of like I've, I kind of teared up in the car. I thought this may be my last. <laughs> <laughs> But then, well, I, re- then I realized I got it was, it was a bug in my eye. Right? So I'm like, man, I was getting all emotional, but it really wasn't. It was a bug. It's a bug. <laughs> yeah, that's good. No, but I would love to come back. I mean, yeah, yeah. there are more words we can just explore yeah. and discover too. Well, yeah. but I got, man, that's a lot that I got to use in the next. Yeah, in the interim. Well, well we had a bet on over under for it was ambulance, zero. and it was, it was zero. zero. You know what? Have you clicked off yet? <laughs> there okay, could be well, one. Then there could still be a possibility. Um, you know if you would have taken the under, I was going to put a thousand dollars. Oh out. wow! But you did it. A thousand of that paper oh, money behind paper me. Paper money behind me. <laughs> uh, well, if you ever want to connect with John, he's at Green Oaky, GreenOaky dot com. But yeah. also, he's a great Twitter follow if you are on Twitter, uh, and you probably see a whole different side of him. But he is all yeah. about his sports. Anything Alabama? Yeah, sports and, and food. Why would anybody and, you know, I've, I've, follow Alabama? Like you, you, I don't know, rednecks. But you, you liked my picture of that uh, Wagyu burger that yes. I... Yes. You made know, a Wagyu burger. Wagyu burger. You liked my cinnamon roll? Yes. I was like, oh my God. I had a flash fried cinnamon roll yeah, this weekend. Yeah, where did you get that? Uh, Brambler's in Tulsa. Was um, it good? It was the best cinnamon roll by far. The, the best pastry I've had. Really? Yes. Sounds like poison. And it was it was amazing. So, anyways. Yeah, but I would love to come back anytime. We can right. talk about anything. I got eight thousand more stories that I bought. You know, from <laughs> old man. Well, we appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for being on the cash flow contractor yeah. and helping contractors have less stress, more time, more money. We'll see you again soon. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Cash Flow Contractor. Check out our website in the show notes or visit thecashflowcontractor.com. What's up, Cashflow Contractors? Khalil here. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this episode. It means the world to us that you're listening. Uh, I've got a favor to ask. So we are looking for contractors who would like to have a consult, a free consult with myself and with Martin Um, for about 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, We'll basically just ask you questions about your business, about what it's like for you to work as a contractor, and then we will answer any of your questions specific to your business. Then we'll make that a live episode for other contractors to learn from, to engage with, uh, and we think it's a great way for people to really see clear, uh, specific answers to problems that contractors have. So if that interests you at all, we're not going to share any of your information. Um, we, you don't even need to say your name on the episode, but I think we want to get some more of these episodes out there. And if you're willing to do that, we've got a link in the show notes that allows you to just submit a form for a consult. Then we'll schedule it with you and record it and we'll put you live on, on, uh, the podcast. So if that interests you, please check it out in the show notes. If not, no worries. Or if you know someone else that you think would be interested in it, send it to them. That'd be great but appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, we hope that you're finding less stress, more time and more money. Thanks.